One thing I wanted to note, because we're talking to two people who live in North Carolina, the voter registration deadline for your state is October 9th. And then your early voting dates are October 15th to October 31st. So if you want to early vote, you can do it in that window. Um, and the recommended deadline to send back your ballot is by October 20th. So if you're going to vote by mail, you definitely want to get your ballot in by October 20th. Um, and you have to request your ballot by October 27th. You can't request a ballot anytime after October 27th. And then election day, obviously, November 3rd. Hi, guys. I'm Jamal Shipman from Survivor Season 39. I have two friends with me here. Um, so yeah, I'm Regina. Um, I graduated from the University of Pittsburgh in April. And since then, have kind of just been rolling with the punches like all of us. Um, mm -hmm. I was planning to take a gap year, but COVID changed that. So now I'm just kind of, right now I'm volunteering in North Carolina. I am Jeremy. I am 26 years old uh, in Asheville, North Carolina. So Western North Carolina uh, in the mountains. Uh, I now coordinate volunteers uh, working for a healthcare agency that specializes in hospice. So end of life mm -hmm. care, um, comfort based care, you know, making sure people are comfortable at that sort of thing. All right. Well, fire away. What, what have you been uh, champing at the bit to, to know? Uh this is still kind of surreal, like getting to actually talk to a survivor. Um, yeah, I've been yeah. watching since I was like four. How, mm -hmm. how far before you start filming do you get to know the people you're playing with? Not at all. Really? Yeah, I went to a live, um, an in-person audition for the show in uh, Mohegan Sun in Connecticut. And literally just like for a minute in front of a camera, they just said, okay, go, who are you? And I was like, oh, uh, I'm Jamal, uh, you know, went to school here, went to, you know, do uh, play sports, I'm good. And then it was over. Like, it was just, just that quick. And then you go, it's so discouraging because there are like a thousand people there. You're like, there's no way they're going to call me. It doesn't even make any sense. So when they called me, I was like, wait a minute, this is a prank. So at my final, I actually saw Karishma, Kelly, uh, Elaine, and Aaron. The five of us were at the same finals. What is like the most annoying thing that like people who don't know the show or whatever that they keep like people when they hear, oh, this guy was on Survivor and they know nothing about Survivor. I, I don't I don't have that same that same like um, reaction to when people don't know about sure. the show because, you know, like it, it I get it. Right. Like it's such a niche thing. It's so yeah. it's, it's a weird it's a weird thing. I did a weird thing. It, it was strange. You know what I mean? So when I would tell my friends, it was just like it was just that it was like, what? Like, is that, that's still on? Like, that's, that's the, the number one question. Yeah. For us. Oh, yeah. That's still on. Um, where do you pee? Where do you poop? That's the, that's the next question. Everyone wants to know that. Um, and then it's like, why would you want to do that? <laughs> <laughs> what was it like? To, so you go out, you do this strange thing, and you come home, and then you watch it with your family and friends. Like, how is that bizarre? Like, walk me through that experience of mm -hmm. walking your back there was a series of scenes where I, I guess I got into a fight with Kelly about making the fire. And then I got into a fight with Nora about the rice. Uh, and then the tribal council was about, you know, me calling out the all girls Alliance. And then they called me sexist for calling out this all girls Alliance. Right? It was, it was the, holy crap. Like they can just do anything they want with the story, you know? So I felt this weird like embarrassment because all my friends know that I'm not that person. Right. Yeah, like the context, like pause it, like, whoa, 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 this yeah, is all context. happening and this is all, but you can't. Anyway. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Why I asked you both here, as, as you know, is to try to get a sense of what's going on out here, right, in, in this political landscape. And like I said, and I guess kind of wondering, like, in this very political moment, in the one we're in right now, what, what kind of bubbles to the surface is in terms of, like, what's important to you? Um, in, in your politics? Basically, one side of my family is falls on one political side and the other side of my family falls on the other it's, it's throughout throughout my life i've you know been able to you know have people from you know both sides you know express opinions and for me to have a face of either side of people that i love very much people's uh opinions and like official stances on issues for the two political parties were closer you know, uh, you know, the further you go back in time and as time has gone on, they just get further and further apart from each other. To, to have an example of a reason why, you know, I appreciate at least what you put on Twitter and stuff was um, 
recently when I think it was, it was when Trump was talking about, you know, injecting, injecting chemicals like right into you or whatever. Right. But then, you know, you have Jamal who you, you take it down and see like, okay, let me try to understand, is there reason there is, can I try to see, you know, what, what is behind that? What, what are you saying? Yeah. Yeah. I can com completely see that obviously. And thank you for, for, for pointing, pointing that out. And, and it is, it's my instinct. It's my instinct to be like, all right, let me, let me cut through this and, yeah. and see if there's a reasonable way to understand why someone believes what they believe or thinks what yeah. they think. The, the thing that bubbles to the surface about politics right now is I'm very disillusioned and I'm kind of heartbroken. Um, but what I've been trying to do is show up for the hard things. Like it, I also have an extended family who's very conservative and thinks very different. Um, and I love them to death and they do care about people. And so it's about having hard conversations with my dairy farmer grandparents who don't support the Black Lives Matter movement. And being like, hey, like, why are you saying what you're saying? And is this another way to think about it? I'm an anthropologist at heart, right? So it's about listening to people in a way that lets them be, give them, gives them the benefit of the doubt and lets them exist in like their own world. Um, so not projecting my reality onto them and saying, oh, you're wrong because I know this is right. Like it's not about right and wrong for me. It's a, it's a little more complex than that. Um, I want to thread together some, something you both said, right? Which is there's this desire or this like draw, you're drawn, both of you, you're, you're, and I didn't design it this way, I promise, but you both of you are drawn to this idea that like, let's just, let's just be able to coexist and, and see each other's perspective and see each other's humanity. I really feel like there's one side more than the other right now that's more willing to do that than the other one. I, and and I, I know that people like to, they love to both sides things like, well, Biden did this and Trump did that. Well, but right now there's a fidelity to fact or like, at least trying to be grounded in reality from the left <laughs> that I feel like the right just kind of gave up on that. Like they just gave up on trying. Trump is different from the right to me, right? Like I, I understand, like I, you can disagree with me on conservative issues all day and we can have that conversation, but Trumpism is a very different thing. Um, and I think he's hijacked the conversation. What do you think? I mean, yeah, just, just watching the debate this week, like, just the like the basic decency of like letting someone speak. I, I get it's a debate. I get that you're supposed to be going back and forth, but just like the basic, like, hey, we are both potential leaders of this country and we will give each other the respect that's due there. Growing up when I've, you know, had people in my family, when when they, you know, when they are more conservative, what 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 did that mean to me growing up? It meant that they were, you know, when I was growing up a little bit slower to speak, uh, you know, um, you know, more, com more compassionate, you know, growing up less, you know, angry, uh, less, you know, uh, more trying to, you know, focus on like responsibility and things like that, which I would say um, is, is not what, I, I don't think Trump represents that, you know, whatsoever. You said normalizing Trumpism and stuff. And even, I, you know, even living in the Southeast, I mean, even beyond like normalizing it, but, you know, you know, praising it, and even in some weird ways, like sexualizing it too. Like, you know, it's, it's like, there is some just like sect where, you know, we have our survivor niche and everything, right? And, and we may have people that look at, like, look at us and like, that's, that's kind of, you know, that's kind of out there, but it's like, okay, whatever. But I mean, the, the amount of fandom that there, that there is beyond a person that, I don't know if there's ever you know been that, and so it's 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 oh, like a celebrity thing. It's yeah, yeah. And so here's the question for me, right? For someone like you, Jeremy, who's like coming to this realization that what is now is not what I understood to be, right? In terms of the right and conservatism, I wonder if there's a moment where you're like, was I wrong this whole time, <laughs> like? Was it not necessarily about the values that you just said, which is like, you know, you know, not quick to speak, being kind, whatever, whatever. And maybe the more motivating factor was what we're calling now owning the libs, right? Like winning at all costs, defeating extremism on the left. And so therefore anyone who stands in the way between me and socialism, 
between me and communism, between me and taking my guns, between me and my God, right? Whatever, whatever it is, whatever that issue is, that's my God. Because it is more dangerous in my mind to uh, be taken over, right? To, to lose our country to these people who want to make us like Venezuela or to make us like, you know, some, some version of America that wasn't the intention of the founding fathers, right? Is, yeah, isn't like the, it, yeah, sorry, like the potency of fear that's getting moved around our country right now is what that made me think of. And it's, it's a powerful tool, but it's, it's, it's terrifying and it's supposed mm -hmm. to be. You know, Trump has, has galvanized, you know, people by, you know, using that rhetoric rather than, you know, the, you know, come, you know, from what, like I, I would, you know, believe that, you know, the more conservative side, like, represents, right? So, so, so let's, let's get into the mind of the people that you know, right? Because you both have said that you have conservative people in your family. So mm -hmm. what is it? Why are those people going to vote for Trump right now? They're going to vote for Trump because they like his, they like his economics and they like his respect for Christianity. Um, and then the other people I'm thinking of, they're more of like, America is getting taken over by the Mexican immigrants and getting stop it. We have to have, like, a, our house has to be kind of stocked with guns and food in case shit hits the fan. And I think they're going to vote for Trump because they're afraid of what you were talking about. Like, anything on the way to socialism or anything towards left is going to, it's, uh, it threatens our country as we know it. So immigration and, and that fear but also like this interesting perception that uh, Trump somehow represents respect for their religion. <laughs> yeah, which I don't get. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's a, that's a hard one. That's a hard one for me, but okay. All right. Uh, go ahead, Jeremy. I, I would say abortion is probably like the number one thing that people use as that kind of like, this is why this side is, is not okay. Right. And then, and then as far as like, you know, like guns go and everything like that, the, the fear of, you know, having, having a government takeover that doesn't allow you to protect for, you know, for your, you know, family. Regardless of who represents the right, it is that issue, right? Because yeah. I, I would say like a, a strong tenet of the left is women's rights or, 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 or you know, obviously you can, you, can, you can spin it with the rhetoric, but it, it's basically the idea that women can control their own bodies and they can make some, they can make decisions about um, uh, what they want to do with their, with their family planning. And so let me, let me, let me put something to both of you and, and see what you think. Cause I've, I've been working on this idea for the last couple of days because I've been wondering about how to get to those people. I've been wondering about like how to like crack that wall that they have or that, you know, that force field. And I think it has something to do with this idea that there are problems, right? There are, there are problems in our society. There's poverty, there's, you know, uh, hurricanes, there's, you know, joblessness, there's what, like litany of problems that politicians claim to be able to fix, right? If just, if only they just get elected, right? They could fix all these problems, all right? I feel like right now, Democrats are doing a better job of at least acknowledging that the problem exists, right? And coming up with reasonable ways to solve them. So what I mean by that is like, let's say it's a clean sweep. Let's say we get Joe Biden in the White House, we take the majority in the Senate, we take the majority in the House, and it's just like blue all across the board. I don't think that that government structure pushes through everything AOC, right? I still think that that government is still hamstrung by your Joe Manchins and like the people who are, you know, blue, but in conservative places that have values that want to respect the Second Amendment and respect the Constitution and make sure we're doing things in a reasonable way and in a, in a financially responsible way. So I think what that sets us up for is like, right now, Democrats will be the ones who would more responsibly respond or, or, or deal with the problems that we have, COVID, right? the racial, you know, uh, climate that we have right now, like, we at least see what the problem is, and we're going to try to find ways to solve it that respects everyone's concerns. Um, the part where I, 
I'm unsure is like what is the best way to actively help people because we have all these, like we have government programs that are done without talking to the people who actually would need it or like getting from there to there like I love the idea of you not having to be a politician to make the change um, personally. I think once if we put all of our eggs in the basket that is the government they're gonna they're gonna be slow and they're gonna have to play by the like rules of the government which is like red tape everywhere um, and I think there are a lot of like private organizations doing a lot of really good things um, okay. and I love to like know more about that and go more into that too because I'm just I'm so disillusioned with the state of our nation with like the politics bubble. Now we have the complete opposite of you know, where it's just everything is antagonistic everything is a battle a war all the time and I think that you see that you see the country you know that's it that's it I, I like i like that a lot because i, I think what you're what you're saying is it, it, the, basically you're saying the president sets the tone or the leadership sets the tone mm -hmm. um so if you have a leader who is like the what we have currently they're literally working against setting the environment or the circumstances where people can actually talk to each other hear each other and solve problems yeah, the stories we're exposed to have like profound effects on how we are in the world and we don't talk about that and so like having our leader be this really inflammatory person it matters and it matters for like my 12 year old sister it matters for all of us and just spending more time on like noticing what stories we're telling and why we're telling them is so needed mm -hmm. oh you guys are giving me life <laughs> we could talk forever i have like a thousand <laughs> questions that i want to ask you guys but one thing I wanted to note, because we're talking to two people who live in North Carolina. Um, so I just wanted to say to everyone that the voter registration deadline for your state is October 9th. And then your early voting dates are October 15th to October 31st. So if you want to early vote, you can do it in that window. Um, and the recommended deadline to send back your ballot is by October 20th. So if you're gonna vote by mail, you definitely want to get your ballot in by October 20th. Um, and you have to request your ballot by October 27th. You can't request a ballot anytime after October 27th. And then election day, obviously, November 3rd. Thank you so much, guys. This is so awesome yeah. to, to meet you guys and connect with you guys. You'll, you'll definitely get an invite for Fantasy Football Survivor next year. So <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I'm, I'm on two. I have two fantasy football teams.